This video will be about this adapter case I made for uh, one of these T12 STC soldering iron kits, but they're available for about $15 on eBay and probably other places. They adapt the kit to run on a 20 volt, a black inductor 20 volt max lithium battery to make it portable. The case has a place for a uh, voltage monitor since this is a lithium battery and it needs to not go, the voltage needs to not be drawn down too much. I didn't have any battery cut off or anything like that, but I just got one of those two wire voltage monitors and put up here and you can just keep an eye on it and when it gets, starts to get low, recharge the battery. This is a 20 millimeter round switch. The case has an iron holder, but it's a separate part that dovetails into the side of the case. And then there's a three millimeter screw running through there to keep it tight. It does a pretty good job of holding it. It's, I'm not going to describe building the kit because that, this video would be too long. There are other videos and there's a good website showing uh, some good details I'm going to link to in the video description. Especially shows the wiring of this handle and the colors that are used for the wire to keep to keep uh, the wiring between here and this plug right, which is probably the hardest part of building the kit. I also have a, a, a schematic pretty simple batteries over here red wire through a switch to and now the other side of the switch hooks up to the voltmeter and the three pin wired connector that you get with the kit that, can, that powers the controller the black wire from the battery just goes straight through to the voltmeter and also to the controller there's a yellow wire that is not used the yellow wire and the three pin connector provided with the kit. I haven't used this too much uh, so far, but it's, I need to get a different tip. I don't really like this, whatever this tip was called, but they seem to be commonly available. But it, it seems to be a, a decent little project to work on. I think it'll make a nice portable soldering iron. I'm going to show the parts that I use to assemble this. Here are the parts that I used. This is what the kit looks like when I got it. It has the controller board, the, all the handle pieces, uh, the connector that has to be soldered onto the controller board, and the wire, various other pieces. It's not too bad of a kit to build. The main part, the hardest part, is soldering or hand wiring this handle, getting all the solder in a confined space, all the wires. That's about $15 on eBay, I believe I got it. All the screws are three millimeter by 12 millimeter. I believe there's 11 of them. This is the switch. It is a 20, 20 millimeter diameter round switch but seem to be pretty commonly available you have to be careful when you're looking at them but one I this one went but I it had pictures of it on the eBay listing that showed it different dimensions than what it actually has I believe it showed 14 millimeters or something as a diameter so you just have to try to sort out what you're getting when you order them this is 20 millimeters You have to make contacts for the, uh, the receptacle that slides into the battery. And I made them out of this K&S 0.032 inch or 0.8 millimeter brass sheet. This is probably the hardest part of building all this is uh, cutting this up without hurting yourself. I used a hacksaw and a vise to get it clamped good. That seemed to work okay. 
you know, I'm sure there's other methods. Uh, I also had a nibbler, but it's a thing you used to buy at Radio Shack. It works real well. It's probably safer, but it makes a mess. Um, when you make the part, I'll provide a, uh, it's like a little template that you can lay down and mark out your part and where the hole goes and everything. If you have to adjust the dimensions, this files very easily so you can file it down to the final dimensions. Okay, I have all the parts laid out here and I'm going to show how to assemble this thing. Uh, first, I'm going to show the components. This is the faceplate. And it is split in half so that if you do like I did and uh, solder this connector onto the board to make sure it all works, you can still assemble it, the, the plate to the, to the uh, controller board. Otherwise, I would have had to desolder the connector to get this uh, to get this plate mounted on this side of this uh, round part. So that's why that's made that way. I figure most people, when they get the kit, will probably do the same thing I did and put it together to see if it works. So you're going to be in the same spot. So this just comes in two halves. You you back off these uh, nuts here and here. Slide the uh, Slide the plates together and then tighten them down. Then you'll end up with this complete unit here. Looks like it might be a middle, little misaligned, but that's okay. Uh, here's the three-pin or the three-pin connector. It comes with a kit. Plugs in. The other parts are, this, I call this a receptacle. This is the part that mates to the battery. And these are called the contacts. One of them's already installed. And they install with a three millimeter by 12 millimeter screw that goes into this hole through, through the contact and threads into this part. The uh, polarity is marked on this. Depending on what kind of, how you want to uh, connect your wires to these contacts, if you want to just solder them directly, then make sure you do the soldering before uh, you put the contact into the plastic because this has to be heated up significantly. It really soaks up the heat from the soldering iron and it'll melt this plastic. But you can put this in there after you solder the wire to it. The way I chose to do it, and the reason they have these funny shapes, just a couple of different ones I tried, shapes I tried, is to accept these uh, quarter-inch spade connectors. They fit on this uh, 132nd or 32 thousandths brass sheet. It's just the right width for them. You just have to cut this to, I believe it's a quarter inch wide. The other one I cut is this way so that uh, the black one's going to go on it. So when it's in there, it fits like that. That works just fine. These are just connectors I salvaged off something else since I didn't want to go to a store to buy more. This is a receptacle. This is the, uh, I believe we call it the top case. It fits on a receptacle like this. This is called the bezel. And it has the round, I believe this is a 20 millimeter switch, 20, 20 millimeter round switch. It's keyed. Once you get it in there, you're probably not going to get it out without maybe cutting some tabs or something. This is a little two-wire voltage um, monitor, voltage display. There are three-wire versions of this. I have no idea if they will work or not.
I have the two wire versions and that's what I used. When, when I put this display in, there was uh, one of these nubs on this side. Hoping this is focusing. But it broke off when I pushed the uh, display down in there. But one holds it just fine. Even if both of them broke off, you could just use some hot glue. I also put uh, screw holes here, but I'm not sure if they'll mount up to other boards or that was just kind of an afterthought. I think hot glue would be the way to go if the nubs don't hold it. The wiring for all this, this is the connector that comes with the board, with the controller board, the T12 controller board. It has a yellow wire that is not used. I believe it's earth ground on if you were to make this a plug-in application, but don't quote me on that. That's just what I've read on the various uh, posts on the internet. Black goes to ground, red goes to positive. The black goes from the battery to the black on the voltage monitor to the uh, black on the three pin connector. The red goes from the battery through the switch and then to the uh, red on the three pin connector and the red on the voltage monitor comes to that side of the switch also so that it's only on when the switch is on. You can see there are recesses in there that accept the, uh, the board. Gotta make sure which is top. This hole goes on the bottom. A hole for the uh, trimmer. There's a trimmer pot in there and an LED here. So a trimmer pot goes on the bottom. The recess accepts this. When it goes into the top case, these uh, bosses will will come over here and keep this in place. And that works out just fine. The other part, besides the bezel, the faceplate, the bezel, the faceplate, the top case, the receptacle, is this uh, iron holder. And it dovetails into the side here. And then a, again, three millimeter by 12 millimeter screw goes through and holds it holds it tight the iron I put this knob on there to give it a little more stability it, it seems to work I wouldn't guarantee any of this part because this gets hot when I was testing it I didn't notice the heat getting back up to the PLA part so only time will tell but if you make it, just keep, a, keep an eye on that. Don't run off and leave it on and uh, hot while it's sitting there. I'm going to show how to assemble it now. First of all, we want to put the contact in here. Then the screw. All of these are 3 millimeter by 12 millimeter. The next part, put the top case on. There are four screws. Here, 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 and here. I'll probably fast forward to this. This can take a while. Especially the first time you do it. Well, these are machine screws and they have to make their own threads. I'll probably just put two of them in for now. They do all four fit though. Next we have to put uh, all this to, in there. It fits like this. First we have to plug in the these. This is the reason I've added plugs so that I wouldn't have to it would be easier to assemble. The black goes on this one. There, there are marks on the case down here. Negative, positive. The red one goes over here. It 
make sure I plug this in or it won't work. Make sure it's off. Decimal points down. So just put all that in there. Four screws. This is keyed, as you would imagine. Fits really nice. Turn it on. Our voltage and our temperature. This is a pretty decent kit for $15. I mean, the soldering iron kit. The hard part is assembling the iron handle. That's kind of finicky. I will provide a link, link in the uh, video description of some good instructions I found with descriptions of, uh, of the wire colors and where they go on the handle assembly, which is the hardest part. 